Welcome to the Major Prime Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Edwin Porras, Dr. Physical Therapy, Medical and Fantasy Points.com. Gracias por tus oídos. Hey, listen, you want to know how to manage your fantasy teams. You want to know what the data says about them. You want to know what they're going to look like after an injury. Go down to the show notes. Get the injury prone draft guide and playbook right off the bat. Okay. Tap it. If you don't like it, if you hate it, uh, I promise you I'll give you your money back. I haven't had one person out of thousands at this point who have bought the product who have hated it. So enjoy it, like it. Uh, if you have questions, reach out, let me know. We'll go down to the show notes and tap there. Short week again, luckily from an injury perspective, because we've got a lot of guys on by. So today I want to focus on Nico Collins and I want to focus on Zach Moss. We'll start with Nico. So Nico's a baller, right? Obviously hurt his hamstring on that deep ball. He pulled up, they pulled him off to the side. I mean, it was a good thing that he walked off under his own power, but he's been diagnosed with a hamstring strain. He was dealing with this in week four. You had to start him. There was no avoiding it, but he, I did say that he was at a higher risk to re-injure. Here's what we know about hamstring strain, similar to what we saw with AJ Brown, right? 75% of wide receivers with a hamstring strain, they miss zero to one games initially. So there's a decent chance that he just doesn't miss a ton of time at all. Uh, the Texans have come out and called him day to day or week to week. I don't remember which it was. Um, but the problem with Nico in general is that 51% wide of wide receivers do end up having some sort of recurrence. Now, technically, you could count this as a recurrence that Nico's having already. But recurrence rate is really the biggest thing that you worry about. They don't necessarily slow wide receivers down, but if Nico does play this week, which I don't necessarily anticipate to be 100% honest with you, but if he does play, he's very much boom or bust. Uh, you have to start him probably in most situations and scenarios, but understand that the weak winner rate, and that's in the injury prone draft guide and playbook, the weak winner rate, which is anybody who averages, any player who averages 150% or more of their typical production, of their average production, uh, the weak winner rate for wide receivers coming off hamstring strains is 17%. For context, on average, players without an injury is right around 25 to 30%. So that 17% is a legit concern. Now, Nico's a baller, obviously. The problem now is that Nico's had soft tissue injuries since he got to the league. He's had a calf thing. He's had a groin thing. Now he's had this hamstring thing. It's been a short career. He's already struggling with these soft tissue injuries. Now, I'm not saying give him away. I'm not saying sell him. I'm not saying trade him away. So listen to this closely. Unless you can trade Nico Collins for another legit top five, really, I want to stop there. Top five guy. For whatever reason, it makes more somebody wants to trade you a top five guy that's that's playing. Uh, if it makes sense, uh, you know, there are some crazy things that happen out there. And he doesn't have a soft tissue. The other guy doesn't have a soft tissue history. doesn't have um, any issues uh, from a volume perspective. Is also a baller. I might do it. This is a really difficult situation to monitor and navigate. Obviously, you drafted Nico Collins in the third round, second or third round, and he's been balling for you. So most of you are probably going to hold on to him. I'm not saying get rid of him. Okay. Now, if somebody wanted to bundle me, Jordan Mason and Christian McCaffrey, and they want Nico because they think that Nico's good and in the clear, I would probably do that. If somebody wanted to offer me for whatever reason, somebody like Justin Jefferson for Nico Collins. I'd rather take the volatility of Sam Darnold than an injury volatility situation. I'd probably do that. Um, off the top of my head, again, I mean, these are just off the top of my head. If somebody wanted to say, hey, I'm afraid of Cooper Cup's high ankle sprain. I don't know what's going to happen with that. I will trade you Cooper Cup for Nico Collins. I would consider it. Now, I'm not saying I'd follow through with it, but I'd consider it. Again, this guy, it has to be another top five guy. It has to be, it doesn't have to be a wide receiver either, right? A lot of the times you can do a position for position. So if somebody wants to offer you a top five running back, I'd probably go that direction as well. But the point is the other individual, the other player can't have an injury history like Nico Collins. So just make sure you vet that. But there are some situations and, and, and I know I get it not in your league because you everybody in your league, super sharp. You're not going to be able to pull this off, but I'd consider it. If not, hold tight. It's okay to just hold tight. Don't expect Nico Collins next week. And if he does play, his injury is has a high risk of recurring. All right. I spoke too long about Nico Collins. Let's move on to Zach Moss. So they've already come out and said that Zach Moss's injury wasn't severe. It's relatively minor. But they said that about Joe Mixon. We haven't seen Joe Mixon in almost a month now. Uh, we're really dealing with a high ankle with Moss, if I didn't mention at the top. 
Um, and what we see with that is the average amount of missed time, like you're seeing with Joe Mixon, is about 2.7 games. Uh, 34% though of the sample since 2014, they've missed just zero to one games with a high ankle sprain. The flip side, 50% of the sample missed at least two games. So two plus games, right? So moral story, it was, it would, it's not likely we're going to see Zach Moss. Um, and so hopefully you have enough, uh, Chase Brown. And even now you can maybe go out and try to trade for Chase Brown because we could be looking down the barrel of a Wally Pip situation. If you don't know who Wally Pip is, uh, he got his job stolen. That's what you need to know. And Chase Brown has looked good. He may just steal Zach Moss's job even when he comes back. That's all we have for today. Pretty short week. Like I said, if you have more injury questions, make sure to email me injuryprompod at gmail.com. And if you have any questions, hit me up there. Make sure you follow me on Twitter at FBInjuryDoc on the old Twitter X streets where you can get more updates from Rashi Rice, updates on Christian Watson, Isaiah Pacheco, et cetera, et cetera. You're going to want to tune in there. So thanks again for everything. Good luck next week.